Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for Southern Rails. In this video, I'll be teaching you the game as it's being played, and I will show one full four-player game today. Now, I would like to ask that if you end up enjoying this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos like this one in the future, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them come with great bonuses like voting on a few of the videos that I film each month. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our four different players. Before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. And I will also put corrections down below in a pinned comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. As you can see, we have a map of the southeastern part of the United States in the middle of the table, and in this game, players are going to be investing in the six different railroad companies, and then laying track for those companies, trying to have those companies be the best at servicing specific types of cities out here on the map. Now, at the start of the game, each player will acquire two of these stocks, and then on each player's turn, they are going to take a single cube from this board and place it down onto the map for a company they have at least one stock in. Now, if that cube goes down onto one of these colored cities, then the income for that city is going to go up, and that's tracked down here, and then you also advance the disk for the associated city type on these tracks. That means these tracks are an ongoing indication of how many green, blue, and red cities each of these uh, railroad companies are in, and the overall income that that railroad company is currently pulling. Now, at the end of a turn where the 10th cube from one of these railroad companies has been taken, we will then go into a scoring where players will get victory points for the shares that they have in front of them based off of whether or not those companies are the best at any of these tracks. If there is a tie for being the best, then no one gets the points. So players are trying to push these uh, railroad companies as far as they can to be the best at as many of these things as they can to get victory points for their shares. After the first three scorings, players will gain more shares, and after the fourth scoring, the game will be over, and the player with the most victory points will be the winner. Now, I will explain how all of this works in greater detail while we are playing the game, and now I think it's time for us to start the game off. For today's tutorial, we are going to play as the pink player over here, and before we actually take our first turn, there is a little bit more setup that we have to do. Now, at the start of the game, we have to take the top stock from each of these six companies and put them out in the middle of the table, and then in turn order, players can take one of those stocks. The turn order is dictated by these number cards in front of us, and since we have the one, that means we get to go first. So, that means we can take any one of these available stocks. And it's worth noting that at the start of the game, every one of these railroad companies is functionally identical. So let's go ahead and take the Atlantic Coastline stock and place that in front of ourselves. After that, the gray player is in the second turn spot, so they can take one of these. And they've decided to take a central stock. After that, orange can choose. And they'll go with the Atlantic and Gulf stock. And finally, the tan player can choose one of these three remaining stocks. They're going to grab Piedmont here. And now that everyone has taken one stock, we are going to take more stocks from the supply until we have one of each company once again face up in the middle of the table. Next up, in reverse player order, each player will take one more stock, and it cannot match the stock that they have already taken. So, Tan now gets to choose one of these, but they can't take the Piedmont because they already have a Piedmont stock in front of them. They've decided to take an Atlantic and Gulf stock, and you may have noticed these numbers on the stocks. Now, those don't have any in-game effect, but they help us know just how many stocks have been purchased from the stacks. After that, Orange can choose, and they are going to take this Western and Atlantic stock. And then the Gray player is going to take this Atlantic Coastline stock. Now, we get to take one of these stocks here, and since none of them are the Atlantic Coastline, we can take any of them. For now, I think let's go with Southern. So we can place that over here, and these two remaining stocks can simply be placed back into their associated stacks. All right, setup is complete, and we can now start playing the game. We will go in player order according to these number cards. So we get to go first, and on a player's turn, they always take one cube from the leftmost side of this board that matches one of the railroad companies they have at least one stock in, and they place that cube out onto the board. If you have a legal cube to take, then you must take one of them. So that means we are going to place either a purple cube or a green cube onto the board. For our turn, let's place a green cube so we can take the leftmost one from this board. And now we have to place this cube onto the board. Since this is the first green cube, we can put it onto any spot where this can fit. And in the future, any subsequent green cubes must go next to previously placed green cubes. Now, I think let's place this into Birmingham over here, which is a red city. 
After placing a cube, if it went into a green, blue, red, or yellow spot, we have to update these tracks. In this case, we went into a red city, so that means we can look to this red track over here, and we are going to move the green token up once on that to show that the green railroad company is currently servicing one red city. After that, the green railroad's income will increase, and the amount it goes up is indicated in the bottom right corner of the board. Now, Birmingham is a red city, so that means the green railroad's income is going to go up by three, so we can show that over here on this income track. These tracks are important because during the game's four scorings, the railroads whose tokens are farthest down the tracks without a tie will then pay out victory points per share to the players who have shares in that company. Now, as you can see, that is going to be one share for the green, blue, and red tracks. And down here, the railroad who has the highest income without a tie will pay out two victory points per share for that company. So right now, the green company is in the lead with red and the income track. But the first scoring is a ways off because scorings happen once the 10th cube of any one railroad has been placed. So right now, uh, nine more green cubes would have to be placed before that could cause a scoring or 10 of any of the other railroads. So it is going to be a little while until we get to that first scoring. I just wanted you to have a general idea of how it's going to work, and I'll go into the details of it once the scoring actually happens. Our turn is done as the number one player, so we can move on to number two, and that is the gray player. They can put a cube down for the black or purple railroads, and they've decided to place a black cube out. Since this is the first black cube going onto the board, it has to go onto a hex that fits, and there are restrictions for how many cubes can be in each of these hexes. For the white ones, there can be up to two cubes of different railroads. For the green cities, only one cube can go down. For the blue cities, up to two cubes from two different railroads can go down. For the red cities, up to three cubes from three different railroads can go. And in Atlanta, which is the only yellow city on the map, up to one cube from each of the six companies can be placed over there. That means this red city over here could take a cube from up to two other cities, but if they place this onto, say, a green city right now, then no other cubes could be placed onto that city for the rest of the game. In this case, they've decided to place the black cube over here into Macon. That is a blue city, which means the black disc for the blue track is going to go up once, and the income for the black railroad is going to go up twice, again because of that blue city. After that, the orange player can go, and they could place a yellow or an orange cube down. Now, they've decided to place a yellow cube, and that is a railroad company that another player has a stock in. It looks like the tan player could also build the yellow railroad if they want. For the moment, it is the orange player's turn, though, and they're going to place that yellow cube out onto the map. So they can take the leftmost cube from the board, and they want to place this down into Atlanta. Now, that is going to increase the income for the yellow railroad by four times which will bring it up to four, but you'll notice there is no track for having a majority of the yellow cities, considering there is only one yellow city, so the yellow token does not go up on any of these other tracks. All right, it's now the tan player's turn, and they can place a yellow or a blue cube down, and they've decided to play along with orange, and they're going to put another yellow cube down. As I said before, when there is already a cube on the map of a railroad's color, then future cubes must go adjacent to a previously placed cube, so this has to go adjacent to Atlanta. The tan player has decided to place this into the northwestern option over there on its way to Cartersville. Now that is a white area, which does not increase the income at all, and there is no track for having cubes on white spaces, so none of these tracks will be updated, and that finished the tan player's turn. Well, it's our turn, and it is interesting seeing how quickly the yellow cubes got out there when the orange and the tan players work together. We do have a purple stock, and so does the gray player, so I think maybe let's place a purple stock out and see if we could work together to make the purple train company go even better because of our cooperation. We can't be sure gray is going to play along, but I still think we'll give this a try. So we can place the first purple cube out, and I think let's put it down here into Columbia. That is quite close to a bunch of these green cities, as well as some other blue cities. That just seems like a pretty good place to start. Now, that is a blue city, which means the purple train company's income is going to go up by two. And then after that, we can move the purple indicator on the blue track up to the one spot. So there is now currently a tie for the railroads having the most blue cities. Now, the gray player can go, and they're not actually all that happy that we placed this here, because that forced a tie with the black railroad, which is, of course, the other share that the gray player currently has. 
That being said, Gray has decided they are going to place a purple out as well. They do see the potential upside of working together with us to try and get into a bunch of these green cities at a potentially quicker rate than the yellow company gets into green cities over there near Atlanta. This, of course, has to go next to Columbia because that is the only other purple cube on the map. Now, the gray player is going to put this over here so that it is one space away from two different green cities. Gray is done, so now the orange player can place a yellow or a red cube out. And they've decided to place the first red cube out, and they're going to put it over here into Florence. Remember, each of these green cities can have at most one cube in them. So by placing that there, they have denied a potentially easy green city from the purple railroad. That's going to increase the red railroad once on the green city track. And the red railroad's income is going to go up by one. After that, the tan player can go, and they can place a blue or a yellow cube. They've decided not to start blue just yet. They are going to place a yellow cube out, and they'll put it into Cartersville. That is a green city, which means the yellow railroad's green track will go up by one, and their income will also go up by one. Well, it's now time for us to go again, and we can once again place a purple or a green cube down. If we placed a green cube, we'd put it over here by Birmingham. We would not add to any of these tracks just then, but on a subsequent placement, we could go into a green city to increase their income as well as their green city positioning. Uh, we could also add over here into purple, where it looks like the Red Railroad Company is making a bit of an incursion. One thing we do know is that only one player can place red cubes out, whereas two players can place purple cubes, which means we could potentially outpace the red player to try and take control of more of these areas. In particular, I think we might want to try and race over here to Fayetteville before the red player can potentially get there. I think let's at least try to make that happen. We don't have to worry about red taking over this spot just yet, considering they would have to do two turns to get to that point. So I think let's place a purple cube, and we will put it right over there. And if our gray opponent decides to play along, they could put a purple cube up here to try and rush purple over to Fayetteville before the Red Railroad. Obviously, that is not going to increase any of the tracks, so our turn is done. Which means the gray player can put a purple or a black cube down. After considering the board state, gray is going to play along, and they are going to put a purple over here. That once again does not add to any of the tracks, but it puts the Purple Railroad in a great position to start really gaining on the green city track. After that, the orange player can put a yellow or a red cube down. And they've decided to put a red cube over here, so that it's one spot away from Wilmington. That's finished their turn, which means the tan player can place a blue or a yellow cube. At this point, they've decided to place the first blue cube of the game, and they are going to put it into West Point, which is a blue city. So that is going to increase the Blue Railroad's token on the blue track once. And the Blue Railroad's income will go up twice. All right, it's time for us to go again, and we can place purple or green. And I think let's place a purple, and we can put it over there onto Orangeburg. That is a green city, so purple's going to go up once on the green track. And the Purple Railroad's income will go up once. Next up, Gray can place a black or a purple cube. And they've decided to put a black cube to the north of Macon. After that, orange can go and place a yellow or a red cube. And they've decided they are going to place a red cube out, and they'll put it into this red city of Wilmington. That means red can now go up once on the red city track. And then the red railroad's income will go up by three, bringing it to four. After that, the tan player can put a blue or a yellow cube down. And they've decided to go for yellow, and they're going to put it over there, one space away from Talladega. Next up, we can go, and we can put a purple or green cube down. And I think let's keep going with purple, and we'll put this down into Monroe. That is a green city, so that means that the purple railroad's income will go up once, and they will also go up once on the green city track, and that puts purple in an uncontested lead for the green track at the moment. Next up, the gray player can put a black or purple cube down. And they've decided to keep pushing the black railroad. They are the only ones with stock in that at the moment, and they're going to put this into Athens which is going to increase the Black Railroad once on the Green City track. And the Black Railroad's income will go up by one. Well, Orange can go, and they're going to put a yellow cube out. And that one is going to go into Talladega. So that means the Yellow Railroad is going to gain once on the Green City track. So it is now tied for first at two. And then the Yellow Railroad's income will go up once, bringing it up to six. After that, the tan player can go, and they are going to place a yellow cube. 
and with it, they've decided to go over here so that the Yellow Railroad is much more likely to get into Gainesville before the Black Railroad does. They're just one step away instead of the two for the Black Railroad. After that, we can go and let's keep pushing purple. Once we remove this cube, you'll notice that there are three more cubes until the purple gets to this column. And this is the 10 cube column. Once a 10th cube is placed for a company, we then go into a scoring where we start to score up all of these different tracks. So the scorings are not that far away and we absolutely need to keep that in mind. Now we could put this over here in Defiantville to increase the green city track once, but I think let's just place this over here. That way we have two green cities that are one space away and we are two spaces away from a blue city to try and continue to compete on that blue track. Currently there is a three-way tie for just one blue city over here. After that, gray can go, and they could put a black or purple cube down, and they've decided to keep pushing black. They're going to take that cube and place it onto this white area. Remember, each of these white spots can have a maximum of two cubes, and no more than one of each railroad color. So that means this spot is full, and the yellow railroad has to be careful because the black railroad is one away from going into Gainesville. Well, orange can now go, and they could place that yellow cube, but they've decided they are going to leave that maybe up to the tan player, and they're going to put a red cube down instead. With this, they're going to go over there so that they are one away from Charleston, which is a red city. Next up, the tan player can go, and they've decided to place a yellow cube. And that is indeed going to go up here into Gainesville, so that means the yellow railroad got there before the black railroad, and black will not be able to go into this green city. Now that means the yellow railroad can go up once on the green city track. And yellow's income will go up yet again. It currently has quite a lead. All right, we can go and we can place a purple or a green. And we've been going pretty hard on purple, which of course has been helping out the gray player. And they haven't really been helping us out. They put quite a few black cubes down. So I think maybe we'll stall out on purple a little bit and place a green cube down. This is only the second green cube placed in the game. And it must go over here next to Birmingham. Going over there does not make sense considering Talladega is already full with the one cube that can go there. We could go into either of these spots to move into those green cities, or I think it's probably going to be better to go onto there. That way we are two away from this blue city, which can take only one more cube, and that also starts working us down over here to Montgomery, which would be the second red city for the Green Railroad. We are done, and now Gray is going to go, and they're going to place another black cube. With this cube, they're going to move into Atlanta. And remember, up to one cube from each of the six companies can go there. And that's the reason why there is this larger Atlanta tile over here. If there are too many cubes to fit on this small spot, you can just place them over here. Now, that obviously does not move them up on any of these city tracks, but the income track is going to go up by four for the black company, bringing it all the way up to seven, tying it with the yellow company. After that, orange can go, and they're going to place a red cube and they've decided to put this one into Charleston, and that is the second red city for the red company. This means they go into the two spot on that track, which also means that red is in a clear majority on that track, and then the red company will go forward three times on the income track, which means they are also gonna go to seven, and there is currently a three-way tie on that spot. After that, the tan player can go, and they're gonna put a yellow cube out, and they would like to put it right over here, so it appears they are making a play to try to get to West Point before the Green Company does, because remember, these blue cities can have at most two cubes in them. Well, we are next, and I would like to put a green down to try and help that out, considering we are the only ones with a green stock at the moment, but the first scoring is quite close, so I think let's focus on purple a little bit more, even though that is likely going to help out the gray player. Hopefully they play along with us and try to boost purple even more. With this in mind, let's put this purple cube down into Greenwood. So that means purple goes up again on the Green City track. And there is now a tie there. And of course, this Fayetteville is still there, just one cube away from putting the Purple Railroad into a clear majority on that track. The income for purple is also going to go up once, bringing it to five. After that, gray can go, and they are going to play along. They are going to put a single purple out. This one is going to go into Fayetteville. That means purple goes up again on the Green City track and again on the income track, so it's now at six. And that was the ninth purple cube, so one more purple cube will cause the first scoring of the game. Next up, the orange player can put a yellow or a red cube down, and they're going to place a yellow, which is going to be the ninth cube of that train color. Now they've decided to put this into West Point, which is a blue city, so that can have at most two cubes, and it has two cubes, so that is at its maximum. 
Now the yellow train company is going to go up once on the blue track. So there is a four-way tie for one blue city. And then yellow will also increase its income by two, breaking this tie, putting yellow up to nine. Well, it's now the tan player's turn, and they are somewhat kicking themselves. They do have this blue stock, and it doesn't appear to be doing much. They are thinking they maybe should have pushed blue a little bit more than they pushed yellow. Right now, the orange player is sitting in a great position where the yellow stock and the orange stock are both potentially going to be scoring them points. So the tan player needs to decide if they cause a scoring right now by placing a yellow, or if they stall things out by putting a blue cube down. They do figure that this is their last turn before a scoring, considering Orange seems very motivated to make the next scoring happen soon, and they'll almost certainly place a yellow on their turn if the Tan player doesn't. After considering it, Tan is going to place a blue cube and leave the yellow cube laying for the Orange player, and they'll place this blue cube over there on its way to Columbus. All right, we can go, and if we place a purple cube down, that will be the 10th purple cube, which will cause a scoring, or we could place a green cube to stop that scoring from happening just yet. Unfortunately, the Green Railroad is at least two cubes away from really making an impact on any of these tracks. So I think let's just place the purple and cause the first scoring of the game. Now we know that's going to happen because this purple cube was on this highlighted column, and we'll get to that scoring as soon as we finish our turn. At the moment, we can't place this purple down into any cities, but we can move towards cities. And I think let's head down to Augusta. We could potentially see a future where the purple company tries to vie for the blue cities track, with Augusta being one away and Charlotteville being two away from this cube up there. And Macon over here is also not that far away, realistically speaking, although there are just six more purple cubes available on the board. In order for purple to get into three more blue cities, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six cubes. So it is doable, but um, it could be derailed by the gray player if they decide to move purple elsewhere. Also, as part of this scoring, after we get our points, more stocks will be given out. So other players also might have purple stocks, and they might have their own ideas. Either way, we are now finished with our turn, and since the 10th cube from one of these railroads has been placed, we can now move into the first scoring of the game. It's worth noting that the game is going to end after four full scorings, so that means we will be playing until four out of these six companies play at least ten cubes. In order to score, let's now focus on this area of the sideboard, and it shows the one, two, three, four, five, six ways that the railroad stocks can potentially score. The first of these is right up here, and it says the most track at 11 plus. Now, what that means is the company that has placed the most cubes on the board will then gain one victory point per share to the players with shares in that company, but there must be at least 11 cubes placed. That means no matter what, in the first scoring of the game, no companies can score this because the first scoring happens when the first company has placed 10 cubes. So no companies have placed 11, which means this will not give any points just yet. But as the game goes on into the next three different scorings, this is another potential way to get points by pushing a company that already has a lot of cubes on the map. Next up, we can look here, and it says the company with the fewest shares owned will give one victory point per share to the owning players. With this in mind, we can focus over here and now see why there are numbers on these stocks so that we can easily glance over and see that there is no company with less shares bought than any other. We can see that the lowest number showing is two, and there are four of these two showing. So there is a four-way tie for the least owned stocks, so that means no one will get anything in that tie. We can now move on to the green city scoring, and since the purple railroad is in the strict majority and not tied for the most green cities, that means that every purple share will give one victory point per share to the players who own those shares. When we focus out, we can see that we as the pink player will get one point for our one purple share, and the gray player will also get one point for their one purple share. Now we can track these points over here. As you can see, there are two different victory point tracks. This one is the overall game victory points, and this one is the round victory points. When we are in the middle of the scoring, we just use this, and then we transfer these points onto the main one once the scoring is over, and you'll see why soon. So, as the pink player, we gain one point, and the gray player also gains one point. Next up for the blue track, if one company was in a clear lead, then each blue stock would be worth one point per share to the players who own it, but there is a four-way tie currently for having the most blue cities. If there is even a two-way tie, then zero points will be given out, so obviously no points will be given out for any shares for the blue city scoring. Moving on to the red city scoring, the red railroad, appropriately enough, is in the strict lead there, so every red share is worth one point to the owning player. Currently, the orange player is the only one with any red shares, and they have one of them, so that will get them one victory point. 
we can put orange onto the one spot as well. And finally, we can score the highest total revenue. Just like all of the other scorings, if there is a tie for the highest, then zero points are given out. But in this case, we can see that yellow is in a strict majority. And for the revenue scoring, it actually pays two victory points per share to the owning players. When we focus out, that means the orange player will get two more points, and the tan player will also get two points. So orange goes up to three points total, and tan goes up to two points. And that has finished all six of the scoring conditions. Now, if this was the fourth scoring of the game, the game would officially be over in this moment, and players would take these points and add them to the points they already had, and the player with the most victory points would be the winner. Obviously, this is the first scoring, so that is not the case, so we can now move on with the overall scoring phase, and the next thing we have to do is adjust the turn order cards based off of the amount of points players just scored. The way this works is the player who scored the least victory points will get the first player marker, the second least points will get the second player marker, and so on, and if there is a tie, then you maintain the relative order between those players that was already in place. In this case, obviously there is a tie for least points with gray and us as pink, so that means we will actually maintain this order, which means we get to keep the first player card and gray will stay as the second player. After that, the tan player scored the third least points, which means they get to go third moving on, which means they will take this card, and since the orange player scored the most points, they will take the fourth player card and go last in the new turn order. After adjusting turn order, it's now time for players to gain one new share each, and the way this works is we take the top share from each of these stacks and we put it into the middle of the table. And now in the new turn order, players will gain one of the face-up stocks from the middle of the table and put it into their portfolio, and you are allowed to have multiple shares of the same company at this point. Now currently, we can tell that the yellow company appears to be the strongest overall as far as making points is concerned, so I think let's take this yellow stock and put that in front of us. After that, the gray player can choose from these five leftover shares, and they've decided they want to double down on their Atlantic Coastline Purple Railroad stock by taking another one, which means they now have two of that stock in front of them. Next up, the tan player can choose from these four remaining shares. And they've decided to go with another Piedmont, which means they have two of the blue shares in front of them. Lastly, the orange player can choose from these three. And they're going to go with Central, which is the Black Railroad. That will go here, and these two remaining stocks will go back onto their respective stacks. After acquiring shares, it's now time for us to add our round victory points to our overall game victory points. That means we and the gray player are at one, the tan player is at 2, and the orange player is at 3, and then we can move all of these tokens back to the 0 spot for the next round of scoring. Well, we can now get back to laying cubes on the map, and we have the 1 card, which means we get to do this first. Now, unlike the previous part of the game, we can now place a purple, a green, or a yellow cube, because we do own a yellow stock. If we look up here, we can see that 9 yellow cubes are out here on the board already, so that means if we placed a yellow cube right now, we would immediately go into the second out of 4 scorings in the game. Uh, we certainly could do that, but uh, I think in this situation, the orange player would actually net a lot more points than we would, considering nothing would actually change with that yellow cube, since by placing one yellow cube, we can't actually change any of the current majorities. So it is not in our best interest to initiate that scoring right now, which means we should place a purple or a green cube down. Now, interestingly enough, we are the only player with a green stock, and we've been pushing purple quite a bit, but since we went for a yellow stock and the gray player took that purple stock, the gray player actually gets a lot more benefit out of purple doing well than we did, uh, technically twice as much benefit. So that means we've kind of put ourselves in a situation where it makes the most sense, I think, for us to push for green. So let's place the third green cube of the game, and I think we should put it over to there so that it is one space away from Montgomery, which would be the second red city for the green railroad. Well, we are done, which means the gray player can go, and they are definitely going to be placing a purple cube. They are very incentivized to have the purple company do well, considering they have two of those stocks. So they're going to take a purple cube, and by doing this, there are now 11 purple cubes removed from this board, so that means the purple company is currently winning the most track requirement over here for the next scoring. So that is a doubly good thing, considering they will also put this down over here, which means the purple company will gain two income and go up once on the blue city track, which puts it in a clear lead on that track. Two income is going to be added to the six that Purple had already, which brings it to eight, which is not the lead or even tied for the lead, but this still put Purple in the lead on two of the six scoring conditions, so the gray player is quite happy overall with this turn. 
After gray is done, play will move over here to the tan player, and they could put a blue or a yellow cube down, and they're definitely going to go for blue considering they have two blue stock. Now the tan player does not have any purple stock, so they feel somewhat motivated to place over here because that is going to be the second blue city for the blue railroad, which means it is now tied for the most with purple, which means the purple railroad will not score for that track if a scoring was to happen soon, and it does feel likely to happen soon considering the next player is orange and they are still in a good position to get a bunch of points from a scoring. Now this will increase the blue company's income by two, bringing it up to four. And now the orange player can go, and they are certainly going to lay a yellow cube. This is the 10th cube for that railroad, which means a scoring will happen immediately after their turn. And they are going to put this cube onto this white spot there, which fills that spot up and puts yellow one away from building into Columbus later on. That isn't going to affect any of these tracks, though. So with their turn done, we can now move into the second scoring of the game. First things first, we are going to score the company that has the most track out with at least 11 cubes down. And right now, only one company has at least 11 cubes, which is purple. That means every purple share is going to be worth one victory point. So as the pink player, we will gain one point and the gray player will gain two. After that, points can be scored for the railroad that has the fewest shares owned. We can glance out here and see that there is a tie for the lowest number at two, which means no company has strictly the fewest, so no company will gain points from this condition. After that, the green track will be scored, and this has not changed since the last scoring, and purple is out in the lead by itself, so every purple share will be worth one point. Once again, that gives us one point, and the gray player two. I'm starting to think we should have taken that purple share instead of the yellow share, but we'll just have to see how this one plays out. Next up, we can score the blue city track, but there is a two-way tie for first, so no points will be given out for those shares. And then on the red city track, the red railroad is still in a strict majority, so every red stock is worth one point per share. Currently, only one red stock is owned, so the orange player will get one point for that. Lastly, we can score the income, and yellow is still in a strict lead on that track, so every yellow stock is going to be worth two victory points each for the owners. When we focus out, that is going to be two points for every player except for the gray player. All right, that is all of the scoring, and it looks like that yellow stock was still pretty darn good for us. And now it's time for us to change turn order. The tan player got the least points, so they will be the first player in the next round. After that, orange will be the second player, and then we are tied with gray once again, and we get to maintain our relative position, which is good for us. So that means we will be in third, and gray will be in fourth. Next up, we can actually log these points. So tan is going to go up by two points, orange is going to go up by three, and then we will go up by four, and so will the gray player. That means we are both tied at five. After that, it's time for everyone to get a new stock, so we can bring out one of each company and put it in the middle of the table. Next up, in the new player order, we can each gain one stock, and the tan player is going to take this purple stock here. Purple seems like a good railroad, and the tan player wants to keep building out the blue railroad, so they'd prefer to take a stock that is probably going to be worth points, considering the gray player is going to be pushing it, while the tan player can continue to try and work on blue. They thought about taking a yellow, but they thought having two stocks would split their attention too much in order to make both of them go well. After that, the orange player can choose from these five, and they have decided to go in for the yellow, which means they have two yellow in their portfolio. Next up, we can choose from these four. And right now, I am leaning towards taking a Southern. We are still the only player with any green. But when we look at the other options, the red company just does not feel very good for the future. It has given the orange player a couple of points because of that red city majority. But we are about to take that away with the green company over here. And then the red company is going to have a hard time doing anything beneficial without having to sink a bunch of cubes that don't do anything over there. Uh, now, the blue company is certainly doing relatively well. We could take that one and then try to ride on the coattails of it, considering the tan player has two of that stock, so they're probably going to be pushing blue quite a bit. The black company is in a reasonable position out here, but I worry if we take it, it's just going to not really do anything, considering over here the orange player owns a black stock, but they're probably going to push yellow, and the gray player owns black stock, but they're probably going to be pushing purple. Now, one thing pushing me away from this green stock is the fact that if we took that, it's likely no one else would take this red, and then the red railroad will have the fewest stocks owned, which means each of those red stocks would be worth one point, giving the orange player a point down here. 
That does mean we could take this red stock and assume that gray will not take the green, which is not an assumption that we can definitely make. But if they didn't take green, then green would be the lowest and potentially be worth points. Now, I think it's somewhat possible that gray will go for the green if we don't take it, considering green is in a pretty good position to explode out onto many different cities on the map. I suppose we could take this blue and then just see what the gray player did and continue to push the green company, although it's unfortunate that any gains we'd get for green, we would just get a one time multiplier for it because we'd only have one share in that case. You know what, I think let's go for it. Let's just take this green and see what happens. Lastly, the gray player can choose from these three and they're going to take this blue stock, which means this black stock and that red stock will go back into the main supply. Well, it's now time to place cubes again, and the tan player gets to lead this off. When we look over here at the cube board, we can see that there is going to be a bit of a lull until the next scoring, considering how many cubes are out here. Now remember, the game is going to end after the fourth scoring of the game, and we have finished two of these scorings, so only two out of these four companies will actually get ten cubes down before the game is over. So the tan player can go, and they are going to place a blue cube out. After considering their options, they are going to place this one right over there. Next up, Orange can go, and they are going to place a yellow cube. And that is going to go into Columbus. That is a blue city, which means yellow can go up once on that blue city track, making a three-way tie at two. And then yellow's income will go up twice, bringing it to 11. We are next, and let's put a green cube down. I think this one should go into Montgomery, which is going to be a second red city for the green company, which means it's tied at two with the red railroad, and then green is going to have its income increased by three, bringing it to six. After that, gray can go, and they're going to put a purple cube down. Now, gray is not happy to see this blue cube placed there, because the gray player was hoping to get the purple railroad company over here into Macon first. If purple went here, Blue could go there, and then purple could go there, and then blue would win that race, of course assuming that these cubes would go down one at a time, and considering how the stocks currently are in our portfolios, it seems unlikely that wouldn't be the case, at least until the game's third scoring. After considering their options, they're going to put this cube down there. Alright, it's back to the tan player to go, and they are indeed going to place a blue cube over there on its way to Macon. Next up, orange is going to place a yellow cube. And they have decided to put it over there. After that, we can go and let's put a green cube out. And the question for us is, where are we going to put it? We need to figure out what play we are making with this green company. We have a couple of stocks in it, so we really do want that to pay off for us, especially considering no one else has any green stock. Now we have two red cities at the moment, and we are tied, which means we're not actually scoring any points for that. And unfortunately... The next red city is quite a ways away. It feels unlikely that we'll get to that before the next scoring. Now, when it comes to blue cities, we are at a distinct disadvantage. We could go to Selma over here, but both of these blue cities are full. So we could also try to switch gears and move into some green cities. Although right now, the green company is not in any green. Now, we could also try to push for an income upset. Um, the green company is currently at 6, and the highest amount is 11. If green was to go to this blue, that would certainly help out, increasing it by 2. But then, again, these are the rather high income spots. And after that, it's a lot of green until we get to this red. I do feel like maybe going down this way is still probably the best bet for the green company, though. So let's put the cube over there. I have to admit, the prospects for the green company are maybe a little bit bleaker than I thought when we took that stock, but we are going to try to do the best that we can with it. After that, the gray player can go, and they are going to place a purple cube. They really want to make sure the purple company has strictly more cubes out than the yellow company does when the next scoring happens, and it's not entirely sure that that's actually going to be the case, but we'll just have to see how this evolves. Now, they're going to put this down into Milgeville, and that will increase the purple railroad once on the green track and once on the income track. All right, the tan player can go, and they have decided to put a blue cube out. And I don't think anyone is surprised to see that cube go down over here into Macon. That will increase the blue railroad's income by two, and it will put it into a clear lead on the blue city's track. The orange player is next, and they've decided to place this yellow cube into Chattanooga, which is a blue city. 
So yellow is going to go up on the blue city track, which means that there is a tie for first, and then the yellow income will go up twice on this income track. Currently, the yellow railroad has quite a lead on this track. Well, we are next, and let's place this cube over here towards Jackson. I think I'm just trying to sprint over here, possibly to Mobile, and maybe we'll pick up some of these spots for more income. But again, it is looking somewhat bleak for the Green Railroad. Next up, Gray can go. And they've decided to place a purple cube over here towards Charlottesville. They could go towards other greens, but it appears they think that the Purple Railroad probably has a lock on this, considering the Yellow Railroad's reach and possibility to connect multiple green cities with only three cubes left. Well, the Tan player can go again. And it appears they are probably trying to book it all the way over here to Augusta if they can with the Blue Railroad. They're going to put this cube there, and they're just two spaces away from that. Next up, Orange can go. And they've decided to place a yellow cube mostly to keep up with this most track laid objective up here. Right now, it does not look like the yellow railroad can actually increase their positioning on these tracks beyond where they are currently at. They don't have a way to get another blue city, and they don't have a way to catch up on this green track. And yellow has a huge lead on the income track, so the orange player is mostly just trying to keep up over here for the most track laid. With this cube, they're going to go over there towards Tullahoma. We are next, and let's continue our mad rush towards Mobile with the Green Railroad. The way these cubes are going out, it appears this might actually work out on possibly the fourth scoring of the game, so I think it's something that we should push. Let's go over here to Jackson, which is a green city. That is the first green city for the Green Railroad, so this will go there. And then the Green Railroad's income will go up by one. The gray player is next. And they are going to continue the game of chicken with the Yellow Railroad by placing a purple cube out and they'll put it into Charlottesville. That is a blue city, which means there is now a three-way tie for the most blue cities over here. And the Purple Railroad's income will increase by two, bringing it up to 11. Well, the tan player is next, and they are going to continue their dash over towards Augusta by placing a blue cube there. Next up, Orange can go, and they're going to place this yellow cube into Tullahoma. That is a green city, which means that yellow goes up once on that track and once on the income track. After that, we can go, and let's continue with our current plan of trying to get over towards Mobile. We'll place this green cube right over there. Next up, Gray is going to place the final purple cube of the game. But unfortunately for them, there is not a particularly good spot to put it, so they are just going to place it over there towards Charleston. Now, there are no more purple cubes, which means the Purple Railroad will not expand any more this game. The Tan Company is up, and they are going to move the Blue Company into Augusta. When they do that, this is the ninth cube for the blue company, so one more will cause another scoring, and they can place this over here. That is a blue city, which means the blue railroad's income will go up by two, and it will go up once on the blue city track, putting it in a strict lead above all of the other companies. After that, orange can go, and they want to make sure that the purple company will not gain points for having the most track out, so they're going to place the final yellow cube of the game, which means there will be a tie for the most track out, and no one will score points for that for the rest of the game. They'll put this cube over here, one away from Nashville. Okay, we are next, and we are one spot away from Mobile. If we got there before a scoring, that would give the green company a strict majority on the red track, which is great, but unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to get there before the third scoring. As you can see, this is the ninth green cube, and there is one more blue cube over there. So if a player puts that out, that will cause that scoring. Although, if that happens, we could cause the fourth and final scoring by placing this green cube here. We'll just have to see how that pans out. Let's place this over here between Mobile and Pensacola. The gray player is next, and they've been pushing purple a whole bunch recently, but there are no more purple cubes, which means they cannot place one out. Now, they must place a cube if possible, so they have to put a blue or a black cube down onto the map. After considering these options, they don't see a reason not to make the third scoring happen now, so they're going to place this blue cube out, and they'll put it onto this spot here. Now we can go into the third scoring of the game, and we can start by seeing that no company will get points for having the most track out, because there is a tie between yellow and purple having all 16 cubes on the map. Next up, there is not a tie for the fewest shares owned. We can see there is just one red share owned. The second share is here, and the rest of these are higher numbers. So that means every red share is going to be worth one point to the owning player. This means orange is going to get one point. And now we can score the green track. Purple is in the lead without a tie, so every purple stock is going to be worth one point. This means tan will gain one point, we will gain one point, and the gray player will get two points. 
Next up, the blue track is going to give one point for every blue stock since there is a strict lead there, which means gray will get one point and the tan player will get two. Moving on, there is a tie for first on the red track, so no points are given out there. And finally, the yellow railroad is still in the lead on the revenue track, so every yellow share is worth two points. This means we get two, the tan player gets two, and the orange player gets four. That's all of the scoring, so we can now adjust turn order, and we once again tie with the gray player, so that continues to be good for us. We will be first, and then gray will be second, and then over here there's a tie between orange and the tan player. The tan player was ahead of orange, so that will stay the case, and they will be third, while orange will be fourth. After that, we can log all of these points. Next up, it's time for all of us to take another share, and this will actually be the final share that everyone can take in this game. Remember, when we get to the fourth and final of the scoring rounds, we finish right after scoring. There is no reason to take any more shares, because of course, they only give points during scorings, and there won't be any more after that point. Well, we get to choose first, and I think we should take yellow. It's going to be worth two points, most likely, and I think that's going to be better than all the rest of these options. I think it is very likely that we're just going to push the final scoring of the game as soon as we get out of this scoring. So let's take this yellow stock, and then the gray player can choose from these, and they'll take this blue stock. Then the tan player will take this purple stock, and the orange player can see what's probably about to happen over here in Mobile, and they will take this green stock here. All right, we can go back to placing cubes, and we get to go first. And as I mentioned before, even though we just finished a scoring, I think it makes sense for us to go right into the next one by placing this green cube here, which is the 10th cube for that company. The reason for that is because we can place this into Mobile, and that is going to increase the green railroad's income by 3, bringing it up to 10. And then, more importantly, green will go up once on the red city track, putting it in a clear majority, which suddenly makes this green stock over here actually worth points for us. After that turn, we immediately go into the fourth scoring of the game, which means no more cubes will be added to the board for the rest of the game. All right, let's go ahead and score these things up here. And we once again have a tie for the most track, so no points are awarded there. After that, the red railroad still has the fewest owned stocks, so every red is worth one, which means orange will get one point. After that, we can score the green track. Every purple share is going to be worth one point because it is strictly in the lead which means we get one point, gray gets two, and the tan player also gets two. Moving on to the blue city scoring, the blue railroad is appropriately in the lead, so every blue stock will be worth one point, which means tan will get two points, and gray will also get two. After that, on the red city scoring, the green railroad is in a strict majority, so it's finally going to be worth points, and in this case, that will be one point per share. This means we get two, and the orange player is going to get one. They snuck in and took this stock right at the end of the last scoring round. Finally, highest total revenue will be scored, and yellow once again is in a clear lead, so every yellow stock is going to be worth two points, which means we will get four points. Orange will also get four, and the tan player will get two. Well, that is all of the scoring, so now we can add these to the points that we've already had so far. And now the game is officially over, and we can see the orange player has won. If there was a tie, then there is no tiebreaker, and the players have to share in the victory. So orange is happy for a strict victory there. We tied for second, and gray came in fourth. So that finishes a four-player game of Southern Rails, and that is also going to bring this tutorial for the game to a close, because I've taught you all of the rules. I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to play the game. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.